Hello and welcome to this episode of the inventory system series. Previously we were working on the interaction system and making our items disappear from the world when we do interact with them. But now we actually need to put them somewhere. So let's go ahead and make the add to inventory system function allowing us to actually add our items to our inventories. So let's get started. Okay, so now we've got the item being removed from the world, we actually now need to add it to our inventory. So let's build our add to inventory function in our component. So we really set that up with our empty function add to inventory. But this is going to be quite an intense thing because what it has to do is basically it has to take the stack of items that we're going to pass through it. And in one by one it's going to find a slot appropriate for that stack of items. So, first thing we need to do in here is we need to just store or well, need to know what values actually first of all we're plugging into our add to inventory so we go to add to inventory and on the inputs here we're going to have in the item id that's going to be a name value and that's going to refer back to the item data table that we've been making so that refers to a row there and we also want to create a uh, a pin for quantity so we know how many we want to add here so do quantity as integer now what we need to do here is store our quantity here as a local value because this can be kept track of to see if we've got any items left to keep adding otherwise we're going to end our add to inventory function so i'm going to drag this out and promote that to a local variable i'm going to call it on local underscore quantity remaining okay and then we're going to use a while loop now while loops are interesting things basically what they'll do is while this condition is true it'll keep looping the body now this can be quite dangerous because if it doesn't ever resolve then it's going to get stuck and never actually ever finish and then the game will freeze and you have an infinite loop so you need to make sure that you do have two conditions going on now the first condition is going to be an external one so like your like immediate like emergency emergency break like hey this has failed enough times let's get out of this uh, and then one is the one you actually want to check against so our two conditions are going to be looking at the local quantity remaining so we'll take that out oh and use get and we're checking to see if this is greater than zero if it's greater than zero we want it to keep on going however if there's no more space available then we want to tell it just to say this is failed give up okay um, so we're going to take out a new local variable called local has failed and we're going to drag that out as well and this will only be the case if this is not true so do not boolean for that and these need to be both true in order for it to continue with the while loop okay and there is our way in and way out now as for the loop itself on loop body we're going to have a few sections here the first one we need to do is find an available slot for us to put it in now this involves finding an empty slot or a slot that's got some stack on it uh, with some space remaining so let's create our find slot function so in here we'll do find slot and the find slot needs to know what item we're looking for so on inputs over here we create one with a row name, or just name rather, and of course one item ID. Okay, so as I said, we're going to see if we can find an existing slot already with that same item. So we're going to take our content array and we're going to do a for each loop on this. And for each slot in there, we're going to take out our array element here, break this open. To access to the quantity and the item ID. So we want to check to see if the item ID here is equal to, first of all, the item ID that's here. Um, and a top tip is if you don't want to keep dragging lines across your whole entire function like this, you can just search for the parameter by doing item ID. And you'll see it's the same one there and there. Put that in there like so. And that'll be our first condition here. But yes, successfully we have found a slot that matches. But the next thing we want to do is find a slot that is not just matches but also has space so we need to know what the max size is for our individual slots so an easy way of doing that is by creating another function that will handle that for us it's something that we'll probably use time and time again so it's quite useful one to have 
So let's go and create another function and we'll call this one get max stack size. And in here you need to know what item we want. So again, another name, item ID. And we're gonna do get data table row. Because we want to get hold of the individual items in that row. And one of those items is the stack size. So we're gonna take that out and do break. And in there you'll find the stack size. And that's what we want to output here. So on the row found, we're gonna do return node and return that stack size. And we can hide the rest of these in the break by just clicking on it and going to hide unconnected pins. Now, a good thing to do as well is work out an error system. If this fails for whatever reason, it's trying to add something that doesn't exist in our data table. We want it to still return something, but we can't use zero. We can't use one or two or anything like that because that's going to affect our stack size. So what we can do here is use negative one. Negative one is often used in coding to indicate a null value or an invalid value. So in this makes a perfect case, makes it a use perfect use case for this. I'll save that. Okay, now to further make this extra useful, we can make this a pure function too. So click on pure tick box there, like so. So taking it as pure means that we can easily add it as a node here, because it doesn't have to be called in the execute line. We can simply just drag it out like so. Okay. So here I'm going to um, put in our item ID. And I'm going to check to see if the quantity that we're trying to add here is less than the max stack size. Uh, not not uh, the quantity we're trying to add here. The quantity that's currently in there is less than the max stack, max stack size. So we'll do less than and put that in there. And that'd be our second condition. So if both of those conditions are true, this means it's found a slot that not only matches the same type, but also has availability in how many places it has. So we're gonna do a return node on that. And we need to know which index that is that it's found. So on the return node, we're gonna to go to outputs and add a integer and type in the word index for the name. We're also going to have a boolean on there, just so we've got a simple boolean saying it has found a slot. Found a slot, and we'll take that to be true. The index will refer to this array index here on the for each loop. So we'll do a reroute and pass that right through. Like so. Now, if it manages to get through all of this and never succeeds, we want to do a return node again, but this time on the completed of this for each loop. That means it's gone through the whole loop and found not a single slot that matches. Okay, so in here we're going to go index zero. We're going to change it to index minus one, referring back to the idea of using negative one as a null value, and found slot will be false. Compile and save. So that's our find slot code there. So we're going to go back to uh, add to inventory. I'm going to drag that into here. And item ID is going to refer to this item ID over here. So let's drag out and search for item ID. Okay, so on found slot, we're going to put that into a branch. And if it's false, we want it to create a new slot. And if it's true, we want to add it to an existing slot. So let's make it add to an existing slot, first of all. So we need to make an add to slot or add to stack function. Let's go add a new function here and do add to stack. And in here we need to know uh, the index we want to increase. So we're going to go to add an index parameter. So we know what slot we're increasing. And also how much we're increasing it by. So we do quantity and that also be an integer. And this one's Fairly simple. All you're going to do is take out your content array and we're going to do set array element and plug that in. We are then going to plug in the index is this index here and the item we're going to drag out and do make and we just want to basically keep the item name the same but the quantity is going to increase by this amount here. 
So if you take out your content array and do get a copy and get the index from there. Just use this. Um, yeah, and then we're going to split this open to see the item ID and quantity associated to that slot. So item ID is the same. Quantity, we're going to add to it. And we're going to add our quantity value here. We'll just drag out and search for. Okay. And that's it. That's what we've got to do here. Hit compile and save that. Go back to our add to inventory. And let's drag that back in to our screen here. An index here will refer to this index down in find slot. Put that in there. And what to see we're going to do is going to be one. So if it successfully add, adds a single item to a slot, we want to take a single item away from our local quantity remaining. So get that out and do decrement, so minus minus, to reduce it by one. And then the loop will continue and it will go again and again and again and again to keep adding all the items it needs to add to the relative slots. So that's if it finds a slot that exists with empty space. But let's find a one that doesn't exist. Sorry, that does exist, but it has no item associated to it whatsoever. So we need to find out whether or not we actually have any empty slots available. So let's make a function to handle that. So we're going to do one called any empty slots available. And another fairly simple one we're going to do here, you can drag out your content array for each loop. And for each item in there, we're going to drag out the array element, break it open, and we'll look at the quantity. If the quantity is equal to zero, that means we found an empty slot. So let's put that into a branch. And then do a return node. And the return node will have an output or a boolean saying is empty slot. So I actually reword that too, has empty slot. Okay. And that will be ticked there saying yes, it does. However, if it gets to the end of it and it hasn't yet found an empty slot, then this is going to fail in here with a false. And like what we did with the get max stack size, we're going to make this a pure function. So we can add that to our thing here without having to execute it. Okay, and that'll go into a branch. Okay, so if that has uh, successfully found an empty slot, we're going to create a new stack. So we're going to make a whole new function on here for create stack. Create new stack. And this is going to require the item ID and the quantity. The name, item ID, and quantity as an integer. Okay, so then we're going to find an empty slot. Uh, so we've got one that says are there any empty slots available? We just need to find out which one is empty available. So if you go into your uh, find empty slot here, or any empty slots available, and in here we're going to add a integer to our return node. That'd be the index. We'll go empty index. We'll call it empty index. And this will be just plugged in from the array index here. So it finds the first one basically and reports that back. And likewise, though, empty index down here, we will make that as equal minus one. So now we can use that same function again to add to our new, create new stack here. So let's put that in here. Uh, empty slots available. And that'll be a branch into the as empty slot. And if it's true, we want to do a simple set array no let's do it again set array element there you go and put that into true so now we've got the index which will come from empty slots available i'll go into there and the item itself will come from our um 
inputs here. So I'm just going to take out my item here and do make slot struct. Bring it up there. Item ID, we'll just do item ID. And quantity. Do like that. Okay. And then it was successful in doing that. So we're going to have an output that says this was successful in achieving the idea of creating a new stack. So let's add a return node in. Add an output here for success as a Boolean. So ooh, let's rename name that one success. And tick that to be true. But if this was unsuccessful in finding an empty slot, we want a return node return false on here. Well, and save that. Okay, so now let's go back to our add to inventory. Yeah, and on this branch, we're going to take out our create new stack and put that onto true. And the item ID is going to be all this stuff over here too. So let's do. Uh, ooh, drag that out, do item ID, and the quantity will be one. We're going to be only adding one at a time for this. It's just going to do one thing at a time, loop round, do another one, do another one, do another one, until it's gone all out, out of, the, uh, of that variable local quantity remaining. Um, so if that was successful, we'll put that into a branch. If it was successful, we are going to deplete our counter with a decrement. Um, otherwise, if it's false, we're going to make it so local has failed is set to true. And that would only happen if we've if you run out of space. Okay, so if we run out of space, it will do local has failed is true. And we also want that as well on this first branch here. Like so. Okay. Right, okay, so that will do there. Uh, next, we need to handle the output of all this while the loop has finished. So this while loop should have placed all these things in the correct location. But we now need to tell our whole entire thing to uh, return a value back to us. So let's do a return node. And a return node is going to have in it the um, success. Boolean and also how many were left remaining? So quantity remaining. That'd be an integer. And the quantity remaining will be zero most of the time. It would only be a value if the success failed uh, because of the local has failed. Okay. So we'll plug that into completed. Success will be local has failed. And we're going to do not Boolean on this. And quantity remaining will be our local quantity remaining. Okay, and there is our add to inventory function complete. So to recap how this works, we go through set our local quantity remaining. Then on a while loop, we're going to go through one by one of that stack, finding a slot of appropriate slot, be it a, a one that already exists with a space in it or not. If it does find one with space in it, we can add to that stack by one and if it doesn't have any space we're going to create a new stack with the item itself and it's going to go through each all of those in a while loop and output them successful or not oh and save that now where this actually gets put we're going to go and add that to our event graph of our uh event graph our item to add sorry to item, uh, item data and in here you're going to do on interact with rather than just do destroy actor before that happens we're going to do add to inventory now for that to work we need to get hold of the interactor who's interacting with it so if, when you're doing multiply you know who's interacting with it so an interactor with here we need to edit this to have an input and this input is literally the reference to the class of your player characters. So first person character in this case. And that'd be player character. Compile and save that. And go back to my update component here. We'll see player character here. And I want to get the inventory component they have on their person. So I'll get their inventory system. And 
Uh, the first thing I'll do is first of all check that they actually still have one available to us. So we do is valid. And then if it is valid, check. And then from there, I'm going to do add to inventory. Uh, the item ID, we're going to get from our item ID stuff. We can split that, get hold of the row name. And the quantity would be the quantity here. And if that was successful, we're going to destroy the actor. Well, save. Now remember, because that contents array is set to replicate, and it's happening on the server side, it should replicate across to all the clients as well. So hit compile and save there. And to test this out, we're going to make a simple debug thing on our uh, inventory system. So I'm going to go into create a new function for this and we'll call it debug uh, print contents. And in here, we're going to drag out our content array, do a for each loop, and plug that in. And for each one, we're going to drag out and do break. And we're going to do a print string. And the print string is going to be a, a, a combination of the both item ID and the quantity. So if I take the in string here and do append, and we're going to build a simple append structure out. So A is going to be our uh, index. We'll chuck that in there. B is going to be a colon with a space after it. C is going to be the item ID itself. D is going to be equal space equal space, and E is going to be the quantity. And then I was we want to call this inventory system. So if I go to the event graph and set up a simple push one to debug this, we'll do debug print contents. I'll save. So I push play now. Oh. Go into my server view here. Pick up the item. And not working. Hang on. Uh, oh, yeah, not working because I forgot to plug in the player character in my interact with. That's my fault. So let's go back to inventory system and go to my interact with. There you go. I need a player character. And that'd be the get owner. So do get owner. And we're going to do cast to first person character. I'm just going to make that a pure cast and plug that straight in there. Okay, and the other thing we haven't done here is initialize our content slots here. So on the begin play of this whole thing, we're going to take out our content array, and do resize, and we're going to plug in the inventory size into it. So add 16 slots, basically. I'll save that. And let's test that out now in action. There you go. And if I push one, you can now see server zero Apple one at the bottom there. Okay, so there we go. We are adding it to our UI, uh, to our inventory component. Let's test it out on the client side. So push play. Go to my client view, which is this one. And stop that. And I hit the one key. And again, it says Apple equals one on our side. And it's there printing it as well because it's a client one. And we have it. And there we go. We can now add our items to our inventories. In the next episode, we're now going to work on our UI, allowing us to show what's actually in our inventory to the screen. You can watch that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady. You can watch all my videos early before anyone else from just $1 a month. Massive thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.